Good day to you, Sid. If we've no crystals to keep the catch cold... The markets in Northreach are as bare as a newborn's arse. We won't be finding any weapons. We have to dig a new cellar. Good to see you, Sid, as always. Uh, Master Quinton's now back. I reckon I could lend a hand. Hello, Sid. Take a seat. Ah, Clive. Your timing is exquisite, as always. I have a concern which you may be able to assist me with. Go on. There are whisperings afoot of shadowy figures having been sighted outside the village. Rustlings in the undergrowth, suspicious noises. My people fear that they are being watched. It may be no more than a surfeit of nerves, understandable in the current climate, or it may be the prelude to something altogether more dangerous. Given what I hope you'll forgive me calling your nose for trouble, I wondered if you might investigate. Of course. Excellent. You might begin by speaking with the good citizens of Lostwing. Listen to their tales, and make what you will of them. All right. I will. My people speak of strange shadows glimpsed in the gloom of the woods. Either these are figments of anxious imaginations, or someone is out there. Someone who does not wish to be seen. Right. Let's see what the people of the village have to say. I'd better find out if this is just nerves. Or something we need to take more seriously. You all right, Sid? Something on your mind? There is, actually. Can I ask you something? Quentin tells me people have mentioned shadowy figures out in the woods. Have you noticed anything unusual? Oh, that. No, sorry, can't help you. I heard the rumors, mind, from the lads working over at the vineyard, but none of them has seen anything either. All right. Thanks anyway. Don't know who the lads heard the story from, but it's going all around the village. Shadowy figures lurking in the woods that disappear as soon as you spot them. Oh, oh it's enough to send a shiver down your spine just thinking about it. The markets in Northreach are as bare as a newborn's arse. We won't be finding any weapons there. Do you have a moment? There's talk of suspicious figures in the woods. Have you seen anything out of the ordinary? No, but I've heard something. Sound of scraping metal, like someone sharpening a sword. Where was this? In Lorbert's Pass. Was out foraging for herbs when I heard it, screeching out from between the trees. Ran back here as quick as my legs would carry me, and I ain't been back since. I see. I'll look into it. Thank you. I was in Lorbert's Pass when I heard it. Sounded like someone wetting a blade. Ready to slit my throat. Put the wind right up me, it did. Seems Lorbert's pass is our best bet, then. What do you say, Toggle? Shall we go and investigate? Black Shields. Here. What the hell are you doing here? What is it to you? 
Not that we give a damn. All that matters to us is that you don't leave here alive. Why were they here? Were they planning an attack on Lost Wing? I need to warn Quentin. Clive, how goes the hunt for our sinister figures? I found some black shields hiding near Lorbert's Pass. They're gone now. Black shields? The Empress's former bloodhounds. Though they serve another master now. One who means to root out and destroy both me and those I care for. And it would appear the pack has finally caught the scent of its prey. Damn it all. I had hoped I would have more time than this. More time to prepare. But if we are cornered, we have no choice but to bite back. And bite back we shall. I'm sorry. You're going to need to explain. Who did the Black Shield serve now? And why would that person want you dead? Because I want him dead. Who? The former Lord Chief Justice of Sanbrac. All that I have built here is for him. I don't understand. Why him? Why Lostwing? I suppose it is better that you know the truth. I was a member of the judiciary once. So sickened was I by the injustice of this world, I swore to fight it. And fight it I did in my own small way. I saw more than a few corrupt officials condemned to the very cells into which they had thrown blameless innocence. Men to whom the law was but a scourge to turn against the powerless. And throughout, it was the Lord Chief Justice who backed me, who was my one true ally in the quest to see justice done. So what changed? I discovered that he hunted bearers for sport. I was a fool to think he shared my hatred of venality and vice. His support for me was no more than a facade, a means of ridding himself of his rivals, a mask to hide the rot beneath. I filed suit against him immediately. His response, however, was rather more visceral. He had my entire family slaughtered. And he faced no punishment whatsoever. I lost everything. My loved ones. My livelihood. My position. The faith I had once held that any modicum of justice might be achieved through the courts. So I set about enacting my own. I tracked down every soul who served him. And slit their throats myself. But the man himself proved an altogether more difficult target. With money and power come protection. And so I saw that I would need an army of my own. 
I came here to Lost Wing and began recruiting like-minded individuals. And everyone here knows this is why you do what you do. Of course. They too have lost loved ones to the bearer hunts. Seen faultless friends sent to the gallows to spare the guilty. All under the watchful eye of the Lord Chief Justice. Our wounds are the same. And our cause is the same. We are comrades. And our revenge is already in motion. We know where he hides, how numerous and well-trained his guard. What we did not know until now, however, was that his plans may already be in motion too. Quinton. Our time is short. He may move against us at any moment, unless we move against him first. My friends and comrades, it begins. Make ready for war. Change his mind. You know what you have to do. Clive, I fear that I must bid you farewell. As you know, our time grows short. The Lord Chief Justice's vultures are circling. We must strike now. Before we part, I want you to know that. Though I may not always have been your most vocal ally, I trust you, as I trusted your predecessor. Thank you. I appreciate the sentiment, and I understand more than anyone how you feel. But is revenge really the answer? It is the one I found, and it is all that I have lived for since that day. But what of Lostwing? Everything you've built. I built Lost Wing to achieve this aim. Once it is done, the village will have served its purpose. My comrades and I are sure of our cause, and we shall fight to the last, come what may. But there are those among us who cannot fight. Children. The elderly. Bearers afflicted by the curse. I would place Lost Wing in their hands, if I thought it would do them any good. But a village home only to the frail and the infirm is not likely to stay a safe haven for long. And so, Clive, I find myself turning to you once more. Will you take them to your hideaway, that they might live even should Lostwing die? I will. Thank you. I will not have it said that I did not see to the well-being of those who rallied to my cause. The people I speak of have withdrawn to Goten's Bales, away from danger in case the Black Shields strike. Understood. I'll make sure they get to the hideaway safely. Then the last of my preparations are complete. Fare you well, Clive. And may Grieger guide us. All of us. Those who cannot join us in the coming fight are gathered at Gotan's Bales. I would ask that you see them to safety. I'll search the village one last time for any stragglers. Then join Master Quinton and get some justice. To Gotan's Bales then, and quickly, before anyone else finds them.
Everyone. Quinton has asked that you come with me. We can no longer guarantee your protection, but I can. There's a safe place I can take you to. Well, if that's what the Master thinks best. Sid. None of us would be standing here today if it weren't for Master Quinton. We owe him our lives. So we ain't about to start telling him what he should do with his. If he's saying we ain't safe in Lost Wing no more, it's because he ain't coming back. And if that's what has to happen, then so be it. I only hope he can see this through to the end. That we get to see justice done. I hope so too. Oi! You lot! Where's everyone else? They ain't already left, have they? They've gone with Master Quinton. Oh, fuck! 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 What's wrong? I've just come from the Justice's Manor. We have to get Quinton to call off the attack. It ain't just the Black Shields protecting the place. He's got a guard dog and all. A fucking monster! They don't stand a chance against that thing. If I don't get the message to them, they're all gonna fucking die! No. We can't let this happen. Sid! Don't worry about us. You've got to catch up with him. We can't let Quinton die before that bastard does. All right. I'll do what I can. Where is this manor? Uh, it's way over to the east, through the woods. Heaven all, he calls it. Promise us, Sid. Promise us you'll do what you can. Tell me I'm too late. Quinton, are you all right? No, but I am alive. Which is more than I can say for my comrades. They followed me, without question, all the way here. And they died. For nothing. This must be the guard dog, Quinton. I'll hold it off. You go. But... Your comrades didn't die for nothing. They died for you. Don't let their sacrifice be in vain. I won't. Come on, then. You're no guard dog. You're just a rabid beast that needs to be put down. Oh! <laughs> 
If only we'd arrived earlier. Is it over? It is. He wept and begged for mercy. And I cut him from ear to ear, just as I dreamed of doing all these years. All my plans, building a haven in Lostwing, freeing bearers from their chains and recruiting them to my cause. It was all for this. But what is this? Justice? My faithful comrades. All those lives lost. So that I might take another. Quinton. Master Quinton! Oh, thank Grega you're safe. You. You're alive. And so are you. I'm so sorry. I... I tried to warn you about that... that thing. And I hate to say it, but... There's more bad news. It's Lostwing. It's been flooded. What? Lost wing. My lost wing. And look who's here. They must have stolen in after we left, just before the flood struck. What if there are still people in there? Don't be a fool! I need to find Quinton. Quinton! Quinton! Look at me! Thank the Founder. He hasn't turned. I'm going to get you out of here.
Welcome back to the land of the living. Is Lostwing... The flood has filled the valley. I see. Then all is at an end. A strange way to achieve one's life's ambition. No, Master Quinton. Save your strength. Why? All that I strove for is gone. Only emptiness remains. I... I have nothing left to live for. What the heck are you on about? You've got us, ain't you? Don't try telling me you only freed us so you could get revenge. We're more than that to you, and we all know it. I... I thought you weren't coming back. But I prayed, and I prayed, and you did. There's got to be a reason for that, right? Can't we just go back to how it was? You know, you looking after us all. Your work ain't over yet, Master Quinton. We believed that you were the right man to lead us, and we still do. Your village may be lost, but it seems your people aren't, so long as you remain to guide them. But why? After what I... Why would anyone follow me? Because we're family, aren't we? Family? Yeah, and all our comrades who went with you, they felt the same. Lostwing weren't just a village. It was all of us. It was. And as long as we're still here, it is too. We can start again. Build a new Lostwing, right here in the Bales. A fresh start. One life ends, and another begins. Why just a village? We could build towns. A nation, even. What's to stop us? That's the Master Quinton we know. Please. I am nobody's master. Quinton will suffice. After all, we are family. Permit me to withdraw my request. I will no longer be needing your help in looking after my people. I'll pretend you never asked. But you must be rewarded for your efforts on our behalf. You saved my life twice over. And more besides. A bottle or two of your finest red will suffice. Of course. Nothing but the best. And I have a feeling that this year's vintage will be the finest yet. If you don't mind waiting, that is. I look forward to it. They are right, you know. Lostwing can be rebuilt. It was more than a mere village. More than a staging ground for revenge. It was a vision of how life might be. Of how we who have suffered can come to find family again. Is everything all right, Goots? You seem more 
discomposed than usual. I don't know what that means, but, but I'm in a bit of a muddle. Oh, I think Nan might be in trouble and she's... <laughs> it's all right. You can tell me. <sighs> there was a trader came by. One of our usuals, like... Said he'd heard some rotten rumours about her down Dallymill Way. Focus saying she's been selling to bandits and cutthroats and that. I mean, she's fond of a chance to make a coin or two, aye, but... But she'd never do business with baddies. Especially not the kind who go hurting people who haven't done out. I wanted to ask her about it myself, but... Well, I'm scared she'll give us a tongue lashing. She'd never give your tongue a lashing, though, would she? Don't worry. I'll speak to her. Oh, thanks, Clive. You'll let me know what she says, won't you? Of course. I'm sure it's all just a misunderstanding. Nan sometimes sells swords and that, but never to anyone who's not a friend of ours. That's how it's been for as long as I've known her. You don't think it's true what people are saying, do you? Lady Karen, how's business? Not nearly as foul as the weather. You're doing good trade then, both in and out of the hideaway. Hmm, can't complain. Wait, what exactly are you getting at? Not once in five long years do you pay my affairs half a care. But here you are today, raking me over the coals like a bloody popotto. Just asking. Out of interest. All right. I'm here because I was told that certain rumours have been circulating. Uh, about you selling weapons to brigands. Oh, are you? And who was it who knows me so well as to tell tales of my evil exploits? I... I, I didn't exactly hear firsthand. All I know is that someone in Dalamil has been spreading word to that effect. And what? You believe it? You think I'm profiting off the blood of innocence, do you? Look, I've done things I'm not proud of. Might be there were a time when I turned a blind eye to the wretchedness of the world so I could line my pocket. But that woman is no more. And you'd know that if you'd ever paid the slightest bit of notice. You're right, Lady Karen. I apologize. It was wrong of me to doubt you. No, it was. No. I reckon you've got better things to do than pointing your do-gooding finger at a poor old woman. Of course. Good day. Oh, the stew's awfully thin these days. I spoke with Lady Karen. What did she say? That the rumours were unfounded and that I was a fool for thinking they might hold any truth, along with some other things that made her feelings clear. And while it sounds like she may have done things she regretted in her past, she says those days are behind her. Oh, well, that's good. I knew Nan wasn't caught up in out bad. But why would people say she was? What did she ever do to them? It's not right. No, it's not. But people do things for all sorts of reasons. Perhaps we'll never know. Well, I'm going to find out. That trader, he said they were all talking about her in Dallymill. So that's where I'm going. I'll find someone who'll tell me, you'll see. Are you sure that's wise? Whoever's spreading these rumors means Karen ill. Oh, right. 
but that's why you'll be coming with me, isn't it, Clive? <sighs> I suppose it is. I'll find out who's been making up lies about Poe and Anne, and when I do, I, I, I don't know what I'll do, but it won't be pretty. Why the hell would Victor take the bearer's side? The bastard's been lying. Can you believe we were going to be? You shouldn't be too hard to find goods. In the square. Oh, I know what. Uh, those damned blackguards took all my best pieces. Just my luck that we were robbed by connoisseurs. Could be I know no something more. more. Hey, Clive, listen! I found someone who says he's heard the rumours about Nan. Have you? Go on. Tell him what you told me. All right. It's like I said. A wizened old crone by the name of Karen's been selling steel to whoever will pay her price. Be they knight or knave. Says the more swords and spears she puts in people's hands, the more war they'll wage. And the more war being waged, the more call for swords and spears. And who will they all turn to to keep them in steel? Why, the good Reaper herself. <laughs> and you've seen this Reaper at work? Aye, it just so happens I have. You'll find her right here, plying her trade most days. Here in Delamil. Where exactly? She has a stall here in the market, but if you're not the patient type, you can probably find her at her storehouse on the edge of town. But it'd be a bolder man than me that braved that particular nest of vipers. Feeling bold, traveler? I hope so, for your sake. Now, if that's all, I have places to be. Sorry to have kept you. You don't think Nan's the Reaper, do you? Not unless she's discovered the secret of how to be in two places at once. Eh? What do you mean? Lady Karen hasn't left the hideaway in weeks. So who has been running this store he spoke of? Good question. I'll go and have a look. And I'll visit this storehouse on the edge of town. All right, but be careful, Clive. You too, Goots. Gilbert, take this crystal! It's no more use than the bearer I sold to buy it! Sounds like something's happening in the square. I wonder what. The bastard's been lying to us for us. None of the stalls were planted this time, thanks be Time to brave the viper's nest. Just you, is it? <laughs> Thought I might have laid it on a bit thick. It was a fairly unconvincing tale. So, what now? That's up to you. Die a slow death, or a quick one. Boys, he's all yours. But that sword is mine. <laughs> Now, we can pretend this didn't happen. Stay down! Get him! Get him. 
Done it now. Go on. Tell me what I've done. When the Borgwin finds out you've killed his men, he'll have your head. He only wanted that bull of a manservant, the dim one always clinging to Karen's skirts. You weren't even supposed to be here. Who the hell are you anyway? What were you going to do to him? The Borgwin wanted him to get to Karen. I was only supposed to point the lump in the right direction once he arrived in Dalamil. But then you turned up. Well, go on then. If you're going to end me, end me. You're not worth the effort. Now be gone. Before I change my mind. <laughs> Fucking coward! I need to find Goot. Right now. Get your filthy paws off me, you naughty painted lout! Stop calling me names! And stop spreading them horrible lies about Nan! <laughs> well, that will be easy enough. For they are not lies. Every last word is true. And she must pay for her crimes in blood! Blood? Goot, are you all right? He... He's gonna kill Nan! He said she had to pay in blood! After what she did, it is only right. She ruined my life and the lives of countless others. That loathsome harpy's very existence is a crime, and I will not allow it to continue. Goots, was it? I have no quarrel with you. Only with your employer. Run along now. You need not pay for her sins. No. No? I don't care what she did. I won't let you hurt Nan. Promise me you won't hurt her. Or I'll... Or I'll... Or I'll kill you myself! Goot, no. Enough, all of you! But how did you...? <laughs> You're a sight less clever than you think you are, the pair of you. Did you think I wouldn't notice the two of you slinking off together? Well, the whole thing got me thinking. Who in Dalamil might bear me a grudge? And a certain snivelling shit I ran afoul of in me fairy years came to mind. Though it was just... Bogan... back then. Won't it? I thought the years might have taught you some sense, but I see you're the same pants-pissing craving you've always been. What was it we called you? Wet legs. You... you bitch! Everything that happened... 
It was all your fault. And now you'll finally pay for what you did to me! Goose, you... If you want a piece of Nan, you'll have to go through me. Fuck. <gasps> you great galoot. Out of the way, I can handle this myself. So, wet legs, you remember what you told me when we last met? An eye for an eye? Wise words, Sam. Wise words. And now, it's time to collect. Sorry to keep you waiting. Is he... Dead? No. But I reckon he wishes he was. It's an easy going through life, one eye shot of a pair. After all, I should know. You don't mean... Oh, don't tell me you didn't notice. Lost it to old wet legs back when we were working the same routes. Said I'd stolen from his strong box. I'd done nothing of the sort, mind. But that didn't stop him taking his little revenge. So I took some of my own. Sorry lost everything. His coin, his clients. Always knew he'd be back one day to claim his due. But he crossed a line dragging poor Goots into this. He didn't hurt you, did he? No, Nan. Still got all my arms, see? Legs too. <laughs> but... What if he comes back again? What if he does? First we take the other eye, then we work our way down. He'll learn his lesson soon enough. But something tells me the wet legs has learned it already. Right. Let's get you back to the hideaway. You've attracted quite enough attention already. ta -ra, Clive! Remind me never to cross you, Karen. Nothing like a dish of cold vengeance to foul the gut. Uh, I'm sorry, Nan. I, I didn't mean to make things worse. I just thought I had to protect you. Like you've protected me. Aye. Well, someone had to. Your parents certainly didn't give a whip for your well-being. Reckon the both of us would be worse off if I'd not taken you on. You've always been me right eye, Goots. And I'd have you stay that way. So don't you dare go looking for trouble again. Well, I will. If you ever need help, I'll do it again and again. And you can't stop me. Why, you big lump. Fine. Play the hero if it makes you happy. Thanks, Nan. I won't let you down. There's nothing he wouldn't do for you. That's as may be. But if he's ever to make his own way in life, he'll need to start looking out for himself as well. Till then, he'll need people to watch his back, just like you did in Dallamill. Don't think I didn't appreciate that. Of course. His family. Stop it. You make me one good eye, mister. I don't go thinking that'll do you any favours. A potion today will cost you the same as it did yesterday.
Let me tell you a story, Clive. All right. Them rumours wet legs were spreading. Might be they weren't just tales plucked out of thin air. You see, there was a time when I weren't too particular about who I sold steel to, so long as they paid me the right price. Some women lust after blood, others after flesh, but me? I were always one for gold. And to satisfy that lust, I sold to opposing armies, stabbed my every client in the back, made myself the most hated woman in the twins. But then one day... One day I met a man who made me a different kind of offer. Said he'd give me access to a realm-wide community of like-minded individuals in constant need of steel and sundries. On the condition, I sold to him and he's alone. Was that the first time you met Sid? Aye. And I fell right into his damn trap. He were true to his word, so I ended up being true to mine. And I soon started making the best profits I've seen since taking up the trade. And all without aiding or abetting any outlaws. Except Sid himself, that is. Told me about his plan to topple the Mother Crystals, you know. Said that with them gone, the realm would want for all manner of things. An opportunity for the likes of me to mint gill. Why, I reckon an enterprising individual could find herself the richest damn in the twins. And that's when he had me. I emptied my stores that day and moved into the Ardaway proper. And the rest, as they say, is ancient bloody history. A dozen years on, and I'm still not the richest damn. <laughs> not for lack of trying, mind. But I can say, I have never been happier. You've all shown me there are some things more precious than gill. That there are. So don't you go messing it all up. Or you'll have me to answer to. Ah, it's a dangerous world out there. It'd better all be here. You'll not find a better price than that. Finished, are you? Mm, the stew's awfully thin these days. You think this means Nana let me go out on the own more? You can thank me later. Anything else? Welcome to the Patron's Whisper. Your benefactors are a generous lot. All yours. You earned this. Come again, I may have more for you.